Hey, welcome to Rational Funk, a drum instruction series starring myself, Dave King. Um, uh, this is going to be a, a drum instruction series that really focuses on not only drum instruction, but life instruction as well. Um, you know, a lot of people wonder, how do you teach the arts? How, do, how, how does one go about, you know, being an art guru? A lot of it is life, life lessons. And um, accompanying that will be some industry, industry secrets, as well as um, the, easy, the most simple technical um, uh, concepts to the most infinitely complex. Um, some, some so complex that there's no fucking way you'll get it. But, like I said, a company with the right life lesson, um, you'll get not close, but what's right before close? Like, you'll get nearer to it. Um, than you are right now, uh, which is not that near to it, probably. Anyway, the point is, is the simple shit, the hard shit, do's and don'ts, industry secrets, warming up, warming down, which is another thing that I am known for, is my warming down technique, which, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have some of that. And listen, check it out if you get bored. Uh, you know, look at your phone or something, or, you know, dial up something off of the Hulu cloud or whatever. One of the first things I want to get clear right off the f***ing bat is, for those of you who didn't know this, the drum was the first telephone. It was the first smart telephone, but it was the first telephone as well. It was the first pay telephone on some level. It was it, any form of telephone that you know of, the drum was the first telephone. Well now, you know, it's sort of like, what does Dave mean by that? What the f does Dave mean by that? I'll, I'll tell you right now. I mean the drum as communication device. I don't mean like, you know, operator, get me the police. I don't mean that. I mean as a communication device, this was the first one. Okay? So now today, you know, you got your smartphone and you're like, uh, you know, like, Siri, where is the nearest Starbucks? And it's like, bow, bow, it, there's one near you. Well, you know, 700,000 years ago, you know, early humans were like, uh, they wanted to send messages to each other, let's say, from long distances. They didn't have you know, telephones, they, and also they, they had the patience to listen for these sounds coming over the hills, you know, Be they weren't uh, distracted by, you know, like uh, madmen and whatnot. So you'd be sitting there in, around your f***ing fire, and uh, all of a sudden you'd hear, you know, like someone, you decide you're going to send out a message. Where is the nearest Starbucks? the nearest Starbucks and then you would send it out and then wait and that's again where human beings were so sensitive our, our senses were so much higher back then that we were able to sit in silence and just wait for it wait for it you might hear like a pterodactyl and, and then he'd be like oh that I wonder if, did it did the drum go when that pterodactyl just went? and then you get paranoid that if that the drum made the sound at the exact time the pterodactyl made it sound there was that's how paranoia was born actually which is another thing we're going to talk about later is like you'd be like that you wouldn't be hearing anything back for a while and then you'd think fuck it went the drum i bet you we didn't hear it because of that fucking pterodactyl and then it's like you know then really do you think and then you self-doubt all that stuff started with that but anyway the point is is and we're going to get into self-doubt a lot and we're going to conquer that motherfucker i'll tell you that right now there's no room for second guessing shit when you're an artist i'll tell you that all of a sudden, you'd be listening really close, three, four days a month. All of a sudden, the, the nearest Starbucks is by the brook, by the babbling brook. And you, there it is. Not, and of course, there's you know, I'm I'm just saying Starbucks now. There were no Starbucks. I don't. Uh, back then, of course, I'm just using an example of how we communicate today and how this is the same. 
Okay? So then, let's say, you know, or like, uh, let's say, okay, let's even bring it more primal. Like, come over here and you know, like the ancient booty call. Come over here and And then it'd be like, you'd really be wanting a quick response for this one, especially if you were someone that had that erectile dysfunction or whatever, and you're like, just taking a Viagra, and it's like, it. you know, I don't know, this is only gonna be for like four hours, I better get the response soon. And it's like, okay, I am coming over and And it's like, hell yeah, because I had about an hour and a half left of this pill. Or, you know, whatever. Speaking of booty, I like to warm up every time I'm playing or having a session where I'm going to be practicing working on some, some of my chops. Um, I like to sink into a nice just shuffle just to get inside the feel. Um, so much focus, especially these days, is on, um, you know, like subdividing everything to the point where, you know, you have to have a, you know, a degree in like quantum mechanics in order to find the one. Um, I like to start everything out with a little shuffle, get inside it, get a little booty. My mother was an eighth grade English teacher. Oh, shit. My, my mother was an eighth grade English One of the keys is making your story with the drums autobiographical. I mean, I'm not going to tell someone else's story when I'm, you know, what am I going to do when I'm being, when I'm talking about myself. And this is a real important thing when it comes to like individual style on your instrument. You got to tell your story. You can't sit down and go, I'm going to tell Dave Weckl's story. No, Dave Weckl tells Dave Weckl's story. So when I sit down and I'm telling my story, I like to play a little shuffle and I like to tell a little bit about myself to myself usually. I mean, there's no one else around when I'm doing this, but I think it's important to tell your story. When I was six. And he said, but you don't even have a wonder's permit. No. No. It's important where you say the no because that's the moment in the memory anyway of an emphatic, you know, like statement. Like well, that's my father denying me, you know, what I wanted, which is rooted in trauma, it's rooted in pain, and you use those things when you make art. That's at least uh, that's what Jackson Pollock did, for instance. Uh, probably a couple of the other abstract expressionists did, you know, based a lot of their work in, 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 in life trauma. 
That doesn't mean that... Uh... You don't have to dig deep as well.